All right, since we've gotten the formality of the course breakdown out of the way, let's do a quick overview of Microsoft 365 and get into a little bit more detail about what the M365 service is doing for us. So Microsoft 365 is a subscription-based software service. And so what that essentially means is that you as a consumer subscribe to the service and consume it on a you know regular basis. Some users and customers pay per user per month per year over a longer term duration, or you can purchase licensing on an as needed ad hoc basis and just consume it at a user license per year type model. But it is subscription based unlike previous versions of Office. Now a while ago, Office 365 went through kind of a rebranding and became Microsoft 365. And quite frankly, what it came down to is that the Office 365 monicum that went with the name uh, basically associated the old Office on-premises products, you know, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, and et cetera. However, with Microsoft 365 and introducing other services like Microsoft Teams, and bringing Skype for Business or Skype for Business Online into the equation amongst other services like Flow and Sway. It really truly became a more holistic software service. So Microsoft rebranded it and called it Microsoft 365. Now, Microsoft 365 is still the same Office 365 in the sense that it includes all the other software that we're known to using over the many years that we've been using Office. Again, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and so on. However, as I've mentioned, we're bringing additional software in Teams, Sway, as well as additional services in the identity space through Azure Active Directory. Now, if you are just now starting to get into M365 and understand the service as a whole, I recommend taking a moment, doing a little bit of, a, of studying, and then reading up on the MS900 certification, which is the Microsoft 365 Fundamentals Exam before jumping in and perhaps diving a little bit deeper into the identity space. Now, Office 365 or M365 is not without its own standard set of prerequisites. So for standalone Office installations, you can follow standard installation software guidance for that product. Now that detail is in the link provided here for individual plans. Now, most of the software without the use of, say, a thick client like Office Pro Plus or Office 2019 or even Office 2016, you can run Office-based applications like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and so on, through a web browser. And there's a whole list of different browser types that are supported, Safari, Chrome, and so on. However, there is recommended use of Microsoft-based web browsers. For example, if you're using Internet Explorer, it's recommended that you use Internet Explorer 11. And if you're going to use the Edge browsing service, then it's recommended that you use the latest version available through the Windows servicing branches. At the end of the day, regardless of your browser of choice, you're going to want to run the latest version and patch release of that particular browser as long as it's supported for Office and M365. Also really quick, let's do a quick licensing breakdown. While there aren't going to be any specific questions to my knowledge on the exam, breaking into specifics and more details around licensing, it's good to understand that there's a lot of different licensing families that support Office and Microsoft 365. So as you can see here, this is just a quick snippet that was pulled from the Office 365 service page that breaks down the different licensing for different organizations. For example, education has its own tier of licensing versus our enterprise commercial customers, which is the designation for the A or the E designator for the licensing tiers. If you want to learn more about the plan options, feel free to click the link and you can look at Microsoft's document library for more information. All right, now that we've gotten some of the prerequisites out of the way, why don't we go ahead and dive into our first module in section one.